M. Madeline in mourning. At the beginning of 1820 the newspapers announced the death of M. Muriel, Bishop of D., surnamed Monsignor Bienvenu, who had died in the odor of sanctity at the age of 82. The Bishop of D., to supply here a detail which the papers omitted, had been blind for many years before his death, and content to be blind, as his sister was beside him. Let us remark by the way, that to be blind and to be loved, is, in fact, one of the most strangely exquisite forms of happiness upon this earth, where nothing is complete. To have continually at one side a woman, a daughter, a sister, a charming being, who is there because you need her and because she cannot do without you, to know that we are indispensable to a person who is necessary to us, to be able to incessantly measure one's affection by the amount of her presence which she bestows on us, and to say to ourselves, since she consecrates the whole of her time to me, it is because I possess the whole of her heart, to behold her thought in lieu of her face. To be able to verify the fidelity of one being amid the eclipse of the world, to regard the rustle of a gown as the sound of wings, to hear her come and go, retire, speak, return, sing, and to think that one is the center of these steps, of this speech, to manifest at each instant one's personal attraction, to feel oneself all the more powerful because of one's infirmity, to become in one's obscurity, and through one's obscurity, the star around which this angel gravitates, few felicities. Equal this. The supreme happiness of life consists in the conviction that one is loved, loved for one's own sake, let us say rather, loved in spite of oneself, this conviction the blind man possesses. To be served in distress is to be caressed. Does he lack anything? No. One does not lose the sight when one has love. And what love? A love wholly constituted of virtue. There is no blindness where there is certainty. Soul seeks soul, gropingly, and finds it. And this soul, found and tested, is a woman. A hand sustains you, it is hers, a mouth lightly touches your brow, it is her mouth, you hear a breath very near you, it is hers. To have everything of her, from her worship to her pity, never to be left, to have that sweet weakness aiding you, to lean upon that immovable reed, to touch providence with one's hands, and to be able to take it in one's arms, God made tangible, what bliss! The heart, that obscure, celestial flower, undergoes a mysterious blossoming. One would not exchange that shadow for all brightness. The angel soul is there, uninterruptedly there, if she departs, it is but to return again, she vanishes like a dream, and reappears like reality. One feels warmth approaching, and behold. She is there. One overflows with serenity, with gaiety, with ecstasy, one is a radiance amid the night. And there are a thousand little cares. Nothings, which are enormous in that void. The most ineffable accents of the feminine voice employed to lull you, and supplying the vanished universe to you. One is caressed with the soul. One sees nothing, but one feels that one is adored. It is a paradise of shadows. It was from this paradise that Monsignor Welcome had passed to the other. The announcement of his death was reprinted by the local journal of M. Sir M. On the following day, M. Madeline appeared clad wholly in black, and with crepe on his hat. This morning was noticed in the town, and commented on. It seemed to throw a light on M. Madeline's origin. It was concluded that some relationship existed between him and the venerable bishop. He has gone into mourning for the bishop of D., said the drawing rooms, this raised M. Madeline's credit greatly, and procured for him, instantly and at one blow, a certain consideration in the noble world of M, Sir M. The microscopic Faubourg Saint Germain of the place meditated raising the quarantine against M, Madeline, the probable relative of a bishop. M, Madeline perceived the advancement which he had obtained, by the more numerous courtesies of the old women and the more plentiful smiles of the young ones. One evening, a ruler in that petty great world, who was curious by right of seniority, ventured to ask him, M. Le Maire is doubtless a cousin of the late Bishop of D. He said, No, madam. But, resumed the dowager, you are wearing mourning for him. He replied, It is because I was a servant in his family in my youth. 
Another thing which was remarked, was, that every time that he encountered in the town a young Savoyard who was roaming about the country and seeking chimneys to sweep, the mayor had him summoned, inquired his name, and gave him money. The little Savoyards told each other about it, a great many of them passed that way.